Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Chrissy Whitehead, and welcome. We welcome Marguerite Derricks today, um, three times Emmy winning choreographer, as well as teacher, passionate educator, and a uh, person who has seen it all in the business. And so we're really thrilled to hear her story today. So um, we had a mishap last week um, with the internet. <laughs> so we're back. So we're going to pick up where we got started because we're going to keep that as part one. And uh, Marguerite, thanks for being here again. <laughs> You're a rock star. My pleasure. You're a rock star. Um, so this is her website. You guys check it out. Um, one of the things that I wanted to, to, and we'll start with here being together, together. Um, it's kind of crazy, Marguerite, when you look when you really do your research, like we tell our students all the time, like know your research, look look up the people that you're working with, really know their body of work and what they've done. Not that the resume makes you a person, <laughs> absolutely not. But um, I think it's important that people really see the body of work you've done and really kind of, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. um, I hope you're really proud. I am, I, I love what I do and I, um, yeah, I, 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 I've, each experience I've had, each job I have done has such great memories. So I, you know, I, I love the journey that I've been on. I feel very grateful and blessed. And so, yeah, I am proud. Yeah. Very <laughs> cool. Good. Because it's important. Like sometimes people can be like, I didn't know how you would be. Someone can be like, yeah, it's good. I can always do better. I mean, you know, when I'm sitting here, I, I, these are fun for me. And I, I kind of put out some highlights um, from your resume that it, as it should be five pages long, it's incredible. So, but did you count these? I bet you have it, Marguerite. You're probably like, when was the last time I even looked at my resume? But you have done 40 feature films, 40. I think I've done more. I think we weeded off some, but yeah, I've done a lot of movies for sure. Okay, well then there you go. I don't even know, I was looking at the resume. Um, and um, I saw that in an interview that I, when I was doing research with you, that you did the Tropic Thunder. You were the, the last dance with Tom Cruise. Well, you know, Tom, that I, I worked on the film. I did other scenes. You know, that was a lot of Tom being Tom. So I can't take a lot of credit for that. But I was, yes, I was hired as the choreographer of the film. Cool. I flew to Hawaii with some girls. We did a couple of scenes. Um, yeah, I loved. I love working with Ben Stiller. He's like crazy cool and a great director. Um, yeah, but, you know, I can't take a lot of credit for Tom Cruise. That's Tom being Tom. <laughs> I was curious about it. I thought that was I thought that was fun. I was I um I, I caught a couple things from Galen uh, from your interview with Galen uh, in 2012. So beautiful. Um, Little Miss Sunshine, which we're going to show a little bit later. Um, love that movie. Yeah, that was a that was a fun one, and 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 that was a very unexpected gem. You know, I always talk about. Um, I I was I'm grateful. It was it was not easy, but I'm grateful that early on in my career, um, I experienced um, the highs and the lows. And um, I learned very quickly on not to expect anything out of a project. Like when I worked on a big budget film with big movie stars, does not mean it's gonna be a hit. And then sometimes the little things, the little, the little, the little things, which was the first Austin Powers was a very low budget indie film and Little Miss Sunshine and you know, those things, you know, unexpectedly became so big and such a such a big part of, you know, they're all a big part of my career, but, you know, very successful. Right. Um, so I learned, you know, early on with Showgirls and then Striptease, big budget films, you know, like really high expectations, big directors and stars, they didn't do so well. You know, um, I mean, Showgirls in time did. You right. Know, <laughs> big following. <laughs> But when it first came out, it was kind of painful because I, you know, you know, just ex we we all expected it to be such a big hit. Um, so I learned very early on not to expect anything. So Little Miss Sunshine was such a surprise. I mean, really a surprise. Um, and I was really grateful that you know I had such a big part in helping to tell the story and 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 the script. They didn't know how to do it. They were really like they uh, and the, the the two directors Jonathan and Val who are so such geniuses. I I watched them in interviews giving me giving me credit for the dance helping to end the film. And I remember when I first got the project, they were like, they sent me the script. And at first, I was like, I don't want to do a script about little girls at pageants. And then I read the script, and I was like, Oh my god, this is the most brilliant thing I've ever read. 
I couldn't wait to work on it, but I remember them calling me and they were like, oh my God, we've been going to all of these pageants. How are we going to like shock people with, with, you know, the, the little girl, the lead right. girls, how are we going to shock people? And I had read the script and I said, well, I think that, you know, her grandfather teaches her the dance and he's a heroin addict. So I would imagine he goes to strip clubs. I said, so if he teaches her a strip routine, that would, that would cause a lot of ruckus. And it was just so joyful because it's like we had this little girl doing a strip routine. Yeah. Knowing that she was doing a strip routine, just doing her grandfather's choreography. And for me, I used a lot of the choreography from showgirls and strip teams to kind of make fun of myself, but it was um, really lovely to, um, you know, help them to kind of wrap the whole film up and, you know, Choreography is such a strong story, storytelling, pushing the story forward kind of, you know, opportunity that I think sometimes, you know, some of the younger choreographers, they like they, they're all into steps and cool steps. And that's all great and good. But you got to tell a story. You got to move the story forward. So for me, Little Miss Sunshine was a big one for that. Really big one for that. I like the learning that um, I think that that's always as we get older is the expectations that you have of something. Just lower your expectations a little bit and you'll be pleasantly surprised. <laughs> you know, just, you know, it's just like do the best work you can do on every single project. Right. Don't compare like, oh, this is really big or this is really small. I, I look at every job now the same. I look at every job the same. I get the, I get the same nervousness before I start every job. I put the same kind of time in preparing and working hard on it. Every job is equal to me. And then it's going to be what it's going to be. The universe takes over, right? So you could only do your best. Yeah, you're, it's out of your control. But you are saying that you really love doing what you're doing. But would you take any Would you take any job now, now that you've been, because somebody could see you as a choreographer that has all of this experience and knowledge that they just want to, would you only now, would you take an independent film? Sure. If it was, uh, it, 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 yeah, I don't like it, it, the size doesn't matter. It's now for me, it's like, am I going to, am I going to have a good time doing that? Am mm -hmm. I going to be able to do something like really special? Like it's never about how much money or how big the project is. Absolutely. I would jump at an indie film, you know, that allowed me to do something special. Mm -hmm. So it's really about the, what the project is not, you know, what I think the project's going to do for me. Cause I, I, I have done a lot and I've been very, very blessed in that way. But I like, I love to work on projects that are, are just fun and that, that I get to really just like dig, dig in and, you know, I think, with dancers, yeah. I mean, I think with dancers too, would you say the same thing for those dancers and art actors and performers listening? Like, you know, sometimes, Oh, I'm just going to do this industrial gig or, you know, like, no, it's all the same. I want them to hear you're saying it doesn't matter what it is. I want to do my heart. I want to put all my work and effort into it. I was taught a long time ago coming from New York where we used to like get dressed up for class and wear our heels and it was a big deal. You never know who's watching you. You know, so if you decide to do something, you should do it as if it's the greatest thing ever because you never know who is watching or who's going to see it and also, it's just um, it's just about creating that that you know discipline and you know it's, it's and your craft too. It's like another chance to practice your craft. It's our it's an honor for us to do, especially now. Like, come on, God. we're like skirted to a halt. I think, uh, like I you know I I'm a, I'm I'm big for the minute I'm done on set, I get out of there. Like I'm the first one gone, and everybody knows that about me. I don't think I'll ever rush off a set again because like, I cannot wait to be back on a set. And I will just sit there at the end of the day and I'll breathe it all in and I'll just be so grateful to be there. You know, um, I think that is what I'm learning in this time is like, wow, like look at what I've been blessed with, what I've done in my life and mm -hmm. what an honor it is, mm -hmm. you know, what a complete honor it is. And I can't wait to do more. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Right. 
Okay, so I'm, I mean, Little Miss Sunshine was such a fun movie. I remember when that was such a hit. So, and I wanted to just tie in that, that release. To me, dancing is a release. And that was a release for that character. For that little girl, her just, rah, you know, and we'll, we'll show it in a little bit. When the family came on stage with her. Yeah. You know, oh. it kind of like, it was, you know, there was, that was such a crazy mixed up family. And that dance brought them together. Yeah, and them coming to support her and them all jumping on that stage and you know finishing off the dance with her, it it, it unified them. It brought them together. It was kind of like magical. It was magical. It was healing and it was magic. I think dance is healing. You know, it it bridges. We don't have to speak the same language. It is the universal language. So we're all doing it no matter how. And that leads to me to to talk about. I love how joyful your sequences are. Marguerite, there, you find such joy, like in the whole breadth of your work, you know, there's joy and there's fun and there's comedy, right? And there's release. Um, and I just like, you got to do Meet the Fockers and Talladega Nights. And these these are movies that everybody just wants to watch right now to just have a good time because the world is like, you know, gosh, we need artists, right? So you were a part of that. What So what what is it about your background, you know, if we go back to when you were, you finished fame and you did your dancing in fame. And when you were in fame, did you have, um, what were some learning curves for you as you're a major dancer on this amazing TV show that everybody would want to be a part of? Um, did you have any, and it was with Debbie Allen. So any, any stories or anecdotes or learning notes from that time of your life? We're going back a little bit. Yeah, no, you know, Debbie was, uh, Debbie was and continues to be my, my major mentor in life. I was, wow, to be there with her, um, you know, I was there when she directed her first thing, when she directed a music video that was within one of the episodes of Fame. Yeah. She's such a brilliant director. And so watching this very strong, um, smart, talented woman kind of rule the set, you know, was very inspiring to me. I, I, and I, to this day, like we're, I'm still very close to Debbie. I love her more than anything. And, and I still watch her like, you know, she's wearing all of these hats. She's a, she's an actress. She's a dancer. She's a choreographer. She's a director. She's an executive producer, you know, like she does it all and she doesn't stop. And so for me, like that's, like I want to do it all and I never want to stop. So she was, so, I was so, wow, how lucky to be around someone like that. Whoa. So inspiring. And um, yeah, so, you know, I, after fame, when I was done with fame, that's when I was like, I need to make a change. <laughs> and that's, that's, when awesome. I started, that's when I started to choreograph, you know, I was so inspired by Debbie. I wanted to, I wanted to like take a, like make a change, take a step up, get into something else. She's never forgiven me for dance, stop dancing so soon. Like she's never forgiven me. She thought I, I stopped dancing too soon. And when I started choreographing, it was a different time back then. And I felt like in order to be taken seriously as a choreographer, I had to stop, you know, um, going out and being a dancer. And that was just a, you know, a decision I made. And I still, I was like, 24 or 25 so I was quite young and I was really a great dancer and um no the type you're talking about you too. yeah yeah so she was mad <laughs> and she still talks about getting me dancing and I'm like I'm like get me a rolling chair and I'll I'll work it <laughs> but um I never had any regrets because I I, I think I was born to do what I'm doing. I was born to create dance. I was born to teach and to choreograph. Like I'm doing what, like really, I feel like I'm fulfilling what I am. And I, I know that there's a director in there. Like there's a lot of other things that I want to do, but I love what I'm doing. And I loved dancing. I really did. But I never really looked back and go, oh, I wish I would have done this, that, or the other. I felt very satisfied as a dancer. Um, so I, I, I was okay with that move that I made. What did what you, did you is, is there anything back a little bit? I think there is. I'm just going to turn this off. What did you, um, when you were with Debbie, 
was there a quality about Debbie Allen that you feel that you absorbed and adapted into your being, into your life with her? Boss lady. Mm. Absolutely. Boss lady, like, you know, knowing how to walk into a, 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 a room full of men and let my voice be heard and be, you know, like being clean and being taken seriously. Um, I've never had issues with that. You know, I hear of women struggling and, you know, a lot of times people will be like, well, you know, and I'm like, no, I don't actually, I don't know. I've never dealt with any of that. I've always been respected and, you know, my voice has always been very clear and loud where I'm working and, yeah. you know, that's how Debbie was like, so, um, you know, just, she talked, she showed me what a boss lady is like. I love that you, I mean, cause that's amazing that you haven't experienced that, but where did you learn that? Did you, did your, I was wondering if you had anything from your mom, did your mom instill in you? Cause you, you know, everybody has a certain essence, right? Marguerite, we all have certain traits that we're kind of just born with. It's like our spirit, you know, yeah. do you feel that like your spirit was like this strong earthly grounded, or did you feel like you learned the ropes through the way and then you kind of settled in? I think a mixture of, of the two, you know, my mother's a very strong woman mm. and my sister, like, you know, I come from a family of very strong women. So I think I was raised that way. And I, I just remember very early on just being that. And, um, you know, even when there was ever negativity thrown my way as a young girl, I remember, it, I think I was 14 or 15 in ballet class and the teacher that was teaching class coming up behind me and whispering in my ear that, you know, you, you know, you have a pretty face, you should go to Vegas, you'll never make it as a ballerina or something like that. And, you know, like, I was just at the ballet bar, I like, she literally came up and said this to me. And it, it I remembered it, obviously, like, right. I, I've never forgotten her words, but I never let her words seep into my spirit and like, steal my confidence. You know, there was a time in New York right before I got fame um, that I was struggling and like, you know, but my struggle was like, you know, for a year, you know what I mean? Like it really, really wasn't that long. Just trying to find out who I was, you know, and where I belonged. And I, I think my sheer belief in myself um, led me to that audition for Debbie Allen because that's what it used to be. Because you know? I see this little, I see this young woman right here, right, and I and I see, is that the time that she was? <laughs> that was that you know that I wanted to be a ballerina. I I trained as a ballet dancer, and I wanted to be a ballerina. And I thought that's I thought that's what I was supposed to be. And right. you know, when I got on Fame, I got to I got to play a ballerina. <laughs> You know, um, and I, well, I have a little. I I took a little bit from um, the stop screen share screen uh, right here. If you just just a couple, it's like a slideshow, but boom. Oh, Michael De Lorenzo. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Wow, that was just wow. Those are major. Major. <laughs> so it's not easy to see you there. Yeah, that was, um, wow. Like for me, that was like high school, you know, like it, like I, I moved out to LA and I, I just remember the first year and a half that I was here, it was just always MGM studios home. And like, we all, we were all together all the time. And it was, so it was magical. And we went to Israel and London and we performed because oh. we were famous. We were the kids from fame, you know? I know. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a great it was a great first job really you know and I wouldn't have had it any other way like that that was where I was meant to be and that's why I always tell people like you know we have these ideas in our mind about who it is we want to be what we want to do but we just got to be willing to you know keep the focus of your dreams but when your dream takes a sharp right go to that sharp right you know yeah because it's go with it. It's better than what I was dreaming, for sure. 
that's the fun part is like we, a lot of us you find as dancers, definitely dancers, you know, check off the boxes, tick, 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 tick. I did this, I worked with this choreographer, I did this job, da, da, da. And then you just never know what's going to be. I just think that it's pretty neat that fame was your first job and you were already in training to be on set all the time and you got to watch so many things and you learned on the job. Yeah. So keep your eyes open, everybody. Whoever, whenever somebody watches this interview, keep your eyes open, watch and learn and soak in on the breaks. Watch the, the choreographer, watch what she's about. Like, I don't know, you can learn so much when you do that rather than going off in your own world or. For sure, absolutely, right? for sure. Um, well, I would like to show, uh, I would like to just show your um, your reel because I think it's just super important and for people to see so we can talk about it um, if you are okay with that. Absolutely. I hope it's the most recent one. Did you get it from my website? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm gonna share the screen and go to Chrome tab and reel on Vimeo. And I'm gonna go full screen. Here. <laughs> what does that make you feel when you watch your work like that? Right now it makes me want to cry because um, I miss being with dancers and I saw La Rev and that show because of COVID is closed for good. And I do not oh, know. I'm so sorry. Hold on, let me turn this on. But, oh, God, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I, <laughs> and then I, I'm thinking, oh, I need to shorten the clip from Westworld and put something else in there. <laughs> you are like looking at an editor. <laughs> Picking it a little bit, but, um, yeah, I, um, I, yeah, it's fun. I, I was editing it and I had a different song. So funny. I had a different song and I was just like, oh, it, it just wasn't working. And then I, that song never that song in there and it just the energy of it was so right for my work because oh. my work does have a lot of energy and um yeah so, i got yeah. i got bun i i got I, I see your ballet training in there i see the joy i see the comedy i see um just super fun I, I, if i saw that i'd be like ah like hands down i'm like i want to work with this person i'm gonna have a good time which is kind of what you said Thank earlier you. yeah Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I had a good time doing all of that stuff for sure. And I love dancers and I, I love that I get to work with so many incredible dancers. Yeah. I mean, Marguerite, how we kind of came, how I got back in touch with you is only because I was taking class from CLI studios and you were teach, you taught a combination on CLI and I sent you the, the tape because I was like, I just went back to childhood and I thank you so much for just doing that, you know, and I haven't talked to you and seen you in years. CLI has saved my life during this time. It's just been such a, uh, an outlet for me. And, you know, it, I love teaching so much. And it, at first I was like, Oh my God, I'm not going to see anybody, but I do because everybody sends me videos of themselves doing the choreography. And it's just, it, I, and I, I answer everybody. There's not oh. one message that comes my way that I don't take the time and, you know, get back to them. And so that has been, um, I love CLI and I'm, I'm excited. We're starting something new for the fall and I'm excited to continue working with them. It's super cool. I have a subscription and in my back studio right here in the heart of North Carolina, I'm still dancing for my heart. <laughs> um, so thank you because that's, it's, you're, you're reaching people. You don't even know you're reaching. Um, so I see that you worked with with a, the, with a lot of famous celebrities. Yeah. Are you nervous before you go into that? And can you pick one or two that out of all of them that we just saw, like what was it like or something that you learned that you took away working with them? Well, I, re I remember being, I was uh, working, I was choreographing Zumanity in Vegas and my agent Julie McDonald called me up and she said, they want you to work with Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. And I was in love of Brad, like most people. Like I just thought, you know, I, oh my God. Like, cause I always, I did, I, I, I would manifest it. After I saw him in um, the vampire movie he did, yeah. I, I, um, I, I remember just thinking, 
I remember I read the second one and there was a little dance scene and I thought, oh, maybe I'll get to work with Brad Pitt. And I really like, I, I would just, I could feel how ama amazing it would be. <laughs> and it was, he was fabulous. And I made sure like, I usually, like I always have assistants come in and yeah. oh, I had my heels on that day. I had a guy for Angie and I took Brad. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> and he was absolutely lovely. He was the nicest man ever. And um, yeah, he, they, they were fun. It was fun. But that was like, for me, you know, that was like a, an excitement beyond. Um, I remember before I worked with Lenny Kravitz, I got super excited. I was say, I saw that in the music videos, like Lenny Kravitz, Celine Dion, Tate. Yeah. I mean, and um, so he, I was really excited about him. And I remember I was working on a commercial and one of my dancers, like when I got the call yeah. and I got excited, like a little kid and she goes, wow, you still get excited. And she was shocked by it. And I was like, hells yeah. Like I, yeah, I still get excited. You know, um, uh, I think my, you know, the most important for me, one of the most important stars and relationships I've had is with Mike Myers. Um, I worked with Mike for about 16 years. We did, you know, so many movies together and TV specials. And um, I learned so much about comedy from Mike. I really did. Um, it was such a, I, I, I can't, I hope I get to work with him again. I really miss working with him. Um, but he was very generous with um, his knowledge of comedy. He always was making me laugh on the set every meeting with him, like your cheeks, you would leave your cheeks hurt. He was just such a, you know, a generous comedian. Um, and um, so he probably is hands down my favorite star that I've worked with. And I, I just, um, yeah. We have well, I have it right here. I would love for you, you want to see the, I would love to show, because I also know of you when I first came out to LA in 98, 99. That was in the mix of knowing who Marguerite Derrick was because you were doing all the Austin Powers movies. Yeah. And so um, I have it here. Boom. Sure. And we'll go to here. The first I love one. this opening sequence. And maybe you can chat over it if you want to. Uh, I'll turn it down some so there's it's not so loud. But anyway, it's kind of fun. Here we go. Good. So cool. Let me turn this off. Um, I mean... It's just super fun, but yeah, you really do know the the. Pa I love watching your patterns and the way things move and shape and come through. Um, and it and we'll get to marvelous Maz Mrs. Maisel at the end, but um, I mean, just just incredible. And I do you feel like you get better every time? Yeah, I, I feel like I am, I, especially with Maisel. Like my chops are so strong because I really do everything on that show. It's a pas de deux with the camera. And most of the time I know before I even start to choreograph what the camera is going to be doing. Cause we do a lot of oneers, like where the camera doesn't stop. Right. So that is just a blast for me. So I'm constantly dancing with the camera. I love that. The steady cam. Have you ever put on the steady cam? Have you ever done that? Have they put it on I you? Drop myself on his back and push him around. They have videos of me doing that on set. Oh yeah. I, I, they, he's, he, he won't move now without me pushing him. He's like, he's used to that. He's like totally cool with it. I just start pushing him around. That's and incredible. Our steady cam operator on Maisel is a genius. genius. He really doesn't need me, but I'm always there anyway. <laughs> oh, it's so cool. That's so, that's so cool. Yeah. Austin Powers was fun. And, and then you did also, you did um 10 things I hate about you. And we have something in common with that. Uh, I was Julia Stiles' dance double in Save the Last Dance. Oh, cool. Yeah. So you worked with Julia yeah. dancing on the, was that her dance scene on the table? Table, yeah. And then I did worked with, um, I did a scene, a big scene um, on the bleachers with, uh, why oh, I he, he Ledger. No. He, he, Ledger. Yeah, yeah. he was brilliant. He was it was his first movie in the States and he was such a sweet guy. He was a sweet guy. I actually met him in Oakwood Apartments in yeah. LA when he was staying there while he was shooting 10 Things I Hate About You, randomly. Yeah, it was fun. It was a fun movie. So cool. And then for television, so I guess we'll, yeah, we'll head on into um, uh, television. Um, one of the ones like that I, that I see that is so cool is with Sutton Foster. 
yeah. um, who everybody in the Broadway world is just, you know, loves. Um, well, you have to love Sutton Foster because there's, whew, she's like the best. <laughs> She is. She really is. I don't know her. I've never met her, but I've seen, loved, enjoyed her from afar. And um, when you got Bunheads, it, I, it to me, it screams was like your inner child. Like, yes, because I loved the the um, where is it? Here, can let me just let's just show it really quickly because I think it's pretty neat. Um, so I'll go to da da da, and I'm gonna share this. Boom. And here, making bunheads. Okay, it's pretty neat. <laughs> I mean, what? So cool! I never watched this episode. I never watched this TV show, but this, this was for our Nutcracker. Incredible. And why did you choose to do it this way? So different. Yeah, just um, it was uh, yeah, it was just just a different, the whole thing. We put a different twist. On. I love it. Fun. So fun. Okay, the, the rats of Wall Street instead of the mice, they were the rats of Wall Street. Oh, that's super cool. And I love these bumblebees. What the heck? Is, is this a bumblebee? Yeah, this was um this was a weird number called pa plastic or paper. It was about um you know conserving the, the earth. Yeah, but this was uh yeah, this was, was I love our... the sheriffs and tutus. Yeah. This is cool too. Yeah, this was fun. This was a one-er. That was all in one take. And Amy Sherman Palladino called me the night before. It was about seven o'clock at night. I was on the set of um, True Blood. And she said, ah, tomorrow morning, I want to shoot this number. It was like seven o'clock at night. So I had to, I ran to the studio to put the choreography together. And those, uh, the two girls with the lead girl, Julia, were my assistants. Um, yeah. Wow, that's crazy. You just never know. Like, what's... <laughs> Yeah. Oh, this she's a genius. She's adorable. And my baby, my baby and me. We're about as happy as babies can be. What if I find that I'm caught in a storm? I don't care if babies did and babies found a keep me warm we're sticking together. What is Sutton one? Has she won like more than one Tony? Yeah. Yeah. And she was a dancer pulled out of the ensemble. So cool. That's right. That's why I say, always be ready. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Yay. So Bunheads, was that was that fun to do? Or did you bring lots of young dancers to that? Like, what do you look for? It looks like to me and all the dancers that you do, I know for our job, we all had to be pretty. I see that you like technical dancers. There's also like show girly. I like technical, well-trained dancers, no matter what I'm doing. I'll always pick the technical, well-trained dancers. For me, with Bunheads, um, it was life-changing because that's the day I met Amy Sherman Palladino, who's the creator of Bunheads. Then I did the Gilmore Girls with her, and then now I'm doing Marvelous Mrs. Maison with her. So uh -huh. it's a relationship that's changed my life. She is my favorite creator. She is, she and I, we... Uh, I don't know if you read the article about us in the New York Times. Yes, that yes. That's us together. But we, we, she says one word and I know what she's like, we, we're just so well connected. So that's what Bunheads was for me. It was, it was such a gift because Amy came into my life. I really didn't know who Sutton was when I got bun, Bunheads. I just didn't know. But it's, boy, it's just a different world. Yeah. And boy, did I learn quickly. And she is as nice as she is talented wow. and uh, working with her was just, it was just the best. Sutton is everything. Um, so yeah. And Bunheads, like we got, to, I got to hire a lot of young dancers, you know, there were so many great, like great numbers, but there were, there was always like a, you know, like a, like with the, the, the rat dance, like for yeah. you know, like everything, we had these weird twisty things that we got to do. 
Um, and it, it was very creative for me. I remember running into oh, um, Rob Marshall's guy, who's a beautiful choreographer. I know Tara Hughes, but I don't, I don't okay. know Tara Schwartz. I'm so mad that I'm not thinking of his name, but he, he was on the same lot. They were doing something. And I remember running into him and he looked at me and he goes, you look so happy. And I really was. I was. I loved Bunheads so much. I we when they canceled us, we uh, we shot a goodbye video that's on YouTube somewhere. Okay. That Amy called me and we put together. We did this goodbye video for the fans because we kind of got the rug pulled out from underneath us, and um, we were sobbing all day long while we were making this video. It was so because they kind of. They kept saying, "Oh, we're going back. We're not. We're going." How many seasons was it? We we did. They they do half seasons, so we did two half seasons. Like we did eighteen episodes. Yeah. But we thought we were going back for more, and um, when we weren't, we did this video and just sobbed. It was just so. It, it was hard for me. It was heartbreaking. It was a, a it was a hard one. And then I always tell people when you're going through that heartbreak, something magical's coming around the corner. And what came around the corner was Heather's a musical, like literally, and and that was another that and that was magical, right? So um, people the, love uh, it, Marguerite, and I love it too. I, I just I, when I when I you know got the music, I was like, oh my god! And we did it in L.A. in a little theater. Yeah, for, I remember hearing, hearing that it was being done. Yeah, make a nickel. I worked for months on it. I didn't make a nickel and I didn't care. I had a blast. And then we got picked up and we went off Broadway and that was just, oh, I loved it. I loved every moment of it. So and many of our students are singing from Heather's all the time. Hey, so, you no know, name, kid. That's that. I mean, the music is brilliant. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. so good. I had no idea. I want to see it. I, is there a, like a bootleg version out there? I'm sure there's something out there. I don't know. Yeah. So you get, yeah, so you had to do... Um, what is your before we go into the stage because I do want to talk about that. But what is your process for television and film when you get something and you get a script? Do you go, um, okay, now I need to grab my assistants and because I need five people for this group? Or do you skeleton crew it before you do it? My process is the same whether it's you know film, TV, stage. It's all the same. I get you know I I get the script, write down notes, ideas. I always want to meet with the director make sure we're on the same page. And then I go in and I skeleton crew it. And I always like to send it to them. I don't put it on an actor's body until I send it to the director and they're like, yes, that's what, you know, so I do all the homework and the ideas. And then, you know, if things need to change, that's fine. But I, I, I'm a preparation queen. Yeah. Skeleton. I love that preparation queen. That's amazing. Skeleton crew, meaning, you take all those people for skeleton crew. Are they going to possibly? I always start with my my assistants. So my skeleton crew starts with just one or two assistants. Great. And then if I need to, uh, like on, on the movie, when I did the movie Fame, I did a week, I think, with two, my two assistants. And then the following week, I brought in seven dancers that were going to do the work for what, what, what would become 20 or 30. And they always are part of the film. Like I would never use somebody in a skeleton crew that didn't get to do the project. Well, I loved this. Um, I thought this was pretty freaking awesome. Is this what you're talking about? That's what, uh, I mean, what do you think when you look back on that one? I remember the day when the director, Kevin Tantron, who is one of my students, one of my dance students actually. Kevin, movie. yes. I remember him in the meeting for this, he picked the music. His his taste was exquisite, and I remember him drawing that thing that the girls were on. Yeah. He drew that, and he goes, "Yeah, I think you can use something like this." <laughs> and he just drew this weird, this little weird thing, and then it ended up being, "I love it. Like I want to do use that again someday." Like it was just such a cool, like toy. And I, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's what I think. And the dancers were. Uh, we did on Fame. The auditions were whew, crazy, so good. These young dancers, like they did, we had a they did, and we had a ballet audition, and they did freestyle ballet across the floor. 
guys doing like triple cabrioles and like just it was like we were screaming and uh -huh. so, then jazz and then tap and they filmed it and they made a uh, uh like a, a reel from the audition and that's yeah. how they that's how they got the money and sold it internationally that's how they got the money for dis distribution distribution was from the audition tape the auditions were like mind-blowing and a lot of these dancers that are like casey money and a lot of them it was their first job really just yeah. like you i mean what was that what did that feel like to be working on fame and that was your first job what did that feel like revisiting yep yeah. yeah. so it was a lot of them it was their first job and they've now done so many projects with me but it was a love fest it was just such a fun 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 movie that's the best i've ever seen carrington dance i i, I worked with her with tice on so you think mm -hmm. and um she was great but she was fierce in that yeah. fierce she was wonderful fierce. yeah um well that's super fun um i also see on here um what was it like with betty white's 90th birthday party special oh. I forgot about that. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. How was she? What was that like? I don't, I didn't, I couldn't, I didn't find that. I didn't look for it, but I saw it on your resume and I wanted to ask. She was delightful. I, I couldn't even tell you. I know Sal was in it. I, I remember that. Um, yeah. I just remember it being fun. I can't even remember what the project looks like. But, right. I mean, they just all start to like a blur. That's right. That's all right. It's just Betty White. She's so loved. You know, she's been living for so long with so much joy. I just anybody who's worked with her, I'm is it, it's pretty neat to to say you've worked with Betty White, um, and then you had the Dancing with the Stars and Cedric the Entertainer. I love the Third Rock from the Sun. What that was so theatrical. That was uh, my first time doing a oneer because that was all shot in one camera take, and um, wow. wow, that was my first oneer, and it was probably the most intricate oneer on a sound stage because we had like there was a we had like a grip. We had to throw like the, the the bucket had to come and hit the guy in the head. So I was counting eights to get like they were manually getting the actor to lift up to that top scalp scaffolding. And yeah. I, like, so they had to learn the choreography and they were so nervous. And we it was all in one take. And the they, dancers were so nervous. They the dancers were fine. But oh. we were we would take it was the the grips that had to do oh, the oh, oh, oh. Got you it. know so they all of a sudden they become became a part of the choreography yeah. i should have had a dancer there i've yeah. learned, learned that now i would have said i need a dancer doing that and a dancer doing that but they had like you know the grips doing it and um we were taking bets on set how many times what would be the take and it was the 27th take that worked and sometimes it was that bucket that came at the end of the dance that would swing past him, not hit him in the head. Like it just like, I didn't it, see that part of it in your reel. That's not that, that part's not in your reel. I don't think a piece of it. Yeah. It's cause it goes on. It's like, yeah. I think it's a minute and a half shot that doesn't stop. And it's just, and it was in 3d. So all of that stuff that wheels past him, when you watched it with the 3d glasses, it, it comes out at you. It was really, it was really, oh. cool. yeah. It was super I love cool. how vivid it looked in the colors and yeah. Yeah. You were on Will and Grace, and you worked on Will and Grace. Was that fun? Oh yeah, totally. And one of my favorite shows. So it's always fun to work with people that you're just so you're you're so familiar with their characters, right? So you kind of right. knew. I did a number for Megan Mullally, and you know where she's like on a dance floor, and she's you know she's hitting on all of these people with her dance moves, and I just kind of knew her character so well. So it was so easy. It was just so easy. Yeah. Yeah. That's fun. So when you see, so, so what's your approach when you're working with actors, especially actors you don't know or whatever, whatnot, and you're, do you, do you take it off of them or do you come with a clear, I know you're, I know that you're preparation queen, but when it comes to the actors, it feels like there's a lot of freedom you give, especially in actors that don't dance. Mike Myers said it in an interview about me. And I always like to quote him. <laughs> he comes with a thousand ideas not attached to any of them. So I come with all kinds of goodies, mm. but not attached to any of them. So I, I, I have all of these ideas and then I watch them and I tailor it to them, to how they move. So mm. I come like with just a bag of goodies and I start to throw things on them and see what works and then, you know, just tailor it to them. 
And then when you do that, it's a collaboration, right? It's always a collaboration is better than being dogmatic or. Oh yeah, for sure. And you know, some, some of the actors have no, I like they, it, I, I just have to find what works. Right. And then, you know, then you have like a comedian like Mike, who that is a, a complete pot of duh of collaboration always. So what about the gap commercial with Claire Danes? Um, what about that one? Let's, you want to see that one really quickly? Yeah, that, that was Claire's great. It's, uh, I did something. Oh, I was do, working at a movie with Claire that Jodie Foster was going to direct. That never happened. So I knew Claire when we did this. Oh, you did. Okay. So I'm just going to, it's only 30 seconds, but I think it's adorable. Thank you. Yeah. I was. Uh, anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. <laughs> You can oh, wear, I can wear better. In what you wear, I look better than you. No, you can't, can't, can't. Yes, I can, can, can. Yes, I can. can. <laughs> oh, I mean, come on. I could watch that over and over again. That's delightful. That was with the directors from Little Miss Sunshine. And so we had the tearaway pants in Little Miss Sunshine. And ironically, I shot that commercial while I was doing the movie. Um, oh my God, my brain. Um, yeah. Rush, Hour, Rush Hour 3. So I was doing Rush Hour 3 and in Rush Hour 3, I had the, 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 it was women, it was a whole tango thing and they were all women and they were dressed up as men and then they pulled off the tearaway pants. So I was like, I was shooting that while I was doing this and I'm like, oh my God, like I, this tearaway pant thing. like. It just seems like, you know, everything kind of comes in, you know, like I did strip tease and then sh uh, showgirls and strip tease. Like, so it was, and then Mike Myers stripping, like it comes in threes. And so I did Little Miss Sunshine and then I was doing the Gap tearaway pants while I was doing Rush Hour 3. And it was like, there was this thing. I'm like, yeah. And I knew, I knew what, how to talk to the wardrobe people about the snaps. It needs to be the snaps. And, yeah. So yeah, staple, I definitely recognize some staple choreography, you know, from, but you know, and it, this one I was trying to get to like when you have in your thing. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. No, there's always, you know, like there's always certain things that become a signature thing. Yeah. You know, um, Try not to repeat yourself too much, but hey, it happens. <laughs> oh, you know what? I think I think it's kind of fun when you have signature steps. Come on, Marguerite. Yeah. It's like, and the, boom, you know, when you go down to the, the grand plie. Oh, you can't get low enough in those plies for me. You can't. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, ha I'm having, I, I just got back from the acupuncturist. I'm having needles put into my right hip from all of that stuff. Well, I'm sure you are. I know. Cause we just go for it full out, but I, I was, I had a blast going back to it. I was like, wow, I have not done this in a long time. Um, the, the last one that um, I just thought would be kind of fun. We're going to wrap it up uh, is uh, the making of frozen just for our Broadway people out there. We, I know because he's such a, both of them are such big stars now. But this to me is quintessential, exciting jazz, fun, joy. And I think I, I definitely want people to see it um, because it's just, uh, let me, I don't know if I give it to you because I, I loved it. And I was like, oh my God, it's the king from Hamilton, um, Jonathan Groff. So we're going to share screen, Chrome tab, and making frozen and share. Is that on my website? It is. Good. <laughs> yeah, it's delightful. It's delightful. It was directed by Kenny Ortega. So, you know, mm -hmm. he's such a G. And it, we had a blast doing it. He's he's brilliant. Um, I love working with Kenny. So that was fun. All those dancers. I mean, that's major. You needed technical dancers, as you can see, you know, like just and, and super fun and outgoing. And the stars were cool. They were great to work with. Fabulous, fabulous, yeah. Okay, awesome. Well, the last thing is, uh, um, you know, you've you've won three Emmys mm -hmm. for your choreography. Did you ever think about the awards? It seems like you just were very focused on the work, and the awards just come. I didn't back then. Uh, there's a little bit more of a. Uh, You know, I didn't. When I was winning all the awards, I wasn't thinking about it. Right. Now there's more of an awareness because I'm on a show right. that gets nominated for 20 Emmys every year. 
you know, so there's more of an awareness of it, but I'm not, I'm never expecting it. I'm never creating for it. Um, I create for the show. I do what's needed for, you know, I never think, oh, I'm going to do this. I could get an Emmy because of this. It's never that. Um, I feel very blessed um, for the recognition that I've had. I feel very blessed that after all of these years that I'm still on top and doing what I love to do, um, that nothing can beat that, you know? Um, yeah. It's that's, touching, Marguerite. Yeah. I mean, it is. That's the prize for sure. Yeah. I mean, awards are great, but. Oh, they're great. <laughs> not, not. They're yeah. great. They yeah. are great and they're beautiful and I love them. And um, I, you know, I hope, you know, I would love to win more if that happens, you know, that I think everybody should be recognized for the work, but um, I'm just grateful that I'm still doing what I love to do. I am too. I'm grateful that, you know, you didn't have to agree to sit and talk with me for an hour about your life and, and, and share with us with Broadway arts community. Um, you didn't have to do that. Not many people will. Oh, that's then, so I, I mean, I love what you're doing. Like you're such a, such a, like a force, like what a beautiful performer you are and mm -hmm. all that you've accomplished. And it's important for us. And that's another thing about Debbie Allen that I love. She has a dance studio, Dada Academy. Yeah. She, will be, she wakes up in the morning and she goes and she teaches elderly people dance to get them moving. Then she goes to Grey's Anatomy and she shoots for 12 hours. And then she goes to her dance studio at night. Now, I don't want that kind of schedule, but she gives back and you're giving back and this is giving back. And it's important to do that. We can't just put all of this work into the, the world and not talk about it and not uh, pass it on. There's a responsibility for the blessings and I'm happy to pay it, pay it forward for sure. Cause I've been so blessed and I've had people help me out in my career and be there for me. So I always want to be giving, I, you know, I never say no. Yeah. Well, it's, <clears throat> it's cool because you, you are part of my childhood and in a way that you don't even know, you know, you just don't know who you're touching. Right. And so then it, it starts. And then even like, and Ryan King, who's, you know, older as well than you, but, you know, and it's like, it keeps going. Look at us. We just keep going in the next generation. And somebody will listen to this interview, a girl, a woman, even myself, who is doing other things and trying to direct and choreograph, you know, you never know who you're um, affecting and how you've affected their story. And we're all in this together, you know? we can't be doing this job without the dancers, without the storytellers, without the writers, without the people, without the steady cams, without the grips. <laughs> it, takes I, it takes a village. Yeah, it takes a village. So I guess what I would like to do is this last bit, as I respect your time, I'm going to show this one picture that I, um, I found. Uh, and let me pull it up for a second. Here we go. Here we go. And uh, I think application window. If you could talk to this little girl and tell her what um, life was going to be like, any advice you give to her, this little girl, this little Marguerite that started out like this. I would tell her to keep her blinders on and not look at what other people are doing. You keep your, the focus on your journey, on your path, on your road, and to enjoy every moment because it goes so fast. It does go so fast. My mom used to say to me, um, she said, uh, she used to say that, Marguerite, keep your blinders on. Yeah, I haven't heard that said in a long time. Yeah, so, just you know, looking at other people and, you know, it could freak you out. You, like, And then you're like, oh, why am I not doing that? You're going to do what you're supposed to do. And you're, if, you keep, if you keep your focus on your journey and you're, you're, you know, you have that strong belief that you don't give up no matter what, no matter how many no's, 
we all are going to have no's. We're all going to have rejection. It doesn't stop. I still get no's and rejection, you know, but you just keep on your path and don't look at, oh, you know, what other people are doing. Don't envy them. There's enough to go around. Hmm. Your journey is your journey. Your journey is your journey. And, and, and it will un, it, like, but if you stop to look, you're stopping. You got to keep moving ahead. <laughs> That's right. Oh, Marguerite Derricks. What a joy. What a pleasure. Thank you again for being with us today and for having this live on YouTube for forever. I hope that this interview was fun for you too, so that you can look at your life and be a thing to look back on and really cherish. Thank you. And I, I really appreciate Chrissy, like you taking the time to find that work in those pictures and you know, you're like, we know each other, so you know me, but just to dig deeper before we did this, it's, it's very appreciated. Thank you. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. All right. As we're having like, do you know that they say flickers of light is like, my mom passed away in 2013 and they say that <laughs> flickers of light is when, and I don't know. Did you see that in my house? I totally saw it. <laughs> I hope it's my nan too, my grandmother. Maybe it's your mother and my grandmother. Yeah. Well, I love you, sweetheart. And, and good luck with all your endeavors. Thank you. Thank you, you so welcome. much. And um, I will be in touch. I don't know what's happening right now, but I think it's time to go. <laughs> Bye. And I can't wait to see this. Thank you. Oh yeah. You're so welcome. It'll be up right away. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye.